Good morning again. My name is Maria Cristina Torverna. I work for Italian Space Agency as responsible for strategy and industrial policy. And it's my pleasure to welcome you here today uh, for this round table to discuss the connection between uh, exploration and space economy. As uh, you know, since uh, it's a pioneeristic phase, uh, the exploration has been uh, strictly connected uh, to the upstream activities, to the development of models and equal capabilities uh, for uh, uh, both uh, LEO orbit or uh, the space mission. But, in, however, in the, new, in the last uh, years, the space sector in general is experiencing a, a sort of revolution, is facing uh, internal and external pressure coming uh, from uh, the, the, the change of the paradigm, the budgetary constraints, the change of uh, the evolution in the industrial sector, which create a lot of interconnection between uh, industry, uh, the a new innovation that, uh, which came from non-space sector, the so-called speed-in, uh, different uh, capabilities, and of course a, wide, a wider range of uh, interest and users. In uh, this frame, the space economy uh, identified the downstream sector as a key element to uh, 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 to, 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 to drive uh, this uh, transition uh, because uh, it is a, a sector in which uh, you can exploit the space investment uh, benefiting a, a wider class of users and in particular a class of new users users that are not interested in uh, space users that can benefit of, of the heritage of what we develop in, uh, in addition, also it's important uh, to uh, find uh, a new approach, both for, for public and private actors, uh, to define the new challenges, the cost, the risk, but also the new opportunities that uh, this new frame can create. And this is uh, the aim of uh, this uh, discussion. Uh, I don't want to anticipate uh, a consideration and conclusion and uh, I want to leave the floor to our distinguished guests and let me to introduce them also if uh, they are all uh, well known <laughs> to, to you. Uh, welcome to Mr. Ofeva from ISA, uh, which is the, who is the head of strategy, uh, strategic planning and outreach office for exploration. Uh, uh, welcome uh, to uh, Mr. Kripalev, uh, who knows the space from a very special point of view, <laughs> but uh, who is uh, today here as uh, the Executive Director for, uh, of uh, Human Space Flight Program for the Cosmos. Very welcome to Mr. Pa uh, Mrs. Pascal Freud, uh, the Chair of uh, the NR Board. Uh, welcome to Mr. Janine Legal, uh, President of NES. And to Mr. Yusuki Hito, uh, uh, Associate Director from JAXA. Uh, welcome to Mr. Patti Stone, the, uh, the President of ASI. And uh, to Mr. Yuno Tian, the Secretary, General, uh, the Secretary General of CSNA. And uh, so uh, I propose you to go directly to our, uh, we prepare uh, some questions to, to boost the discussion. And uh, of course, I give the floor to our guest uh, to answer. But at the end, if you have a question or you want to comment on what uh, we, uh, we will uh, say, of course, we give uh, a small talk uh, for uh, intervention. Okay? And uh, I want to start. Uh, let me start with, uh, with Mrs. Uh, Ed Freud. Uh, before uh, going to downstream, we can uh, a little comment on upstream, uh, the role of uh, upstream space economy. Uh, uh, DLR made a lot of investment in the upstream sector. How we can exploit uh, the investment for future, in exploration for future activities? Well, I think um, uh, I have been a 
part of the, um, uh, a national academy study in the United States um, about the rationale for economic benefits um, uh, of exploration. And I remember that uh, uh, we did an extensive study. We looked at all the papers which um, uh, have been written, you know, also uh, during, uh, 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 during the Apollo area about economic benefits. And I think it is very, very difficult to quantify. But it is a very urgent question. Since I'm the first speaker, I think uh, this panel is really, really crucial because everything is about economic benefits, explaining our politicians um, to uh, invest in exploration because we want to gain more knowledge, we want to do uh, a cutting edge technology and we want to go further in the universe. And it is sometimes very, very difficult to explain this to politicians. That's why I think this panel is really great in order to uh, discuss uh, possibilities how we can justify um, economic benefits. And we can all understand the upstream. We are uh, creating platforms. Uh, um, also the launcher sector obviously is related to it. Um, uh, 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 all kinds of technology ca cap capabilities which we need in order to go into deep space is fascinating. But it's very difficult to say what kind of economic benefit it has uh, to, uh, and what kind of possibilities for the downstream sector. And I think it is uh, not really, you cannot really quantify it. So we have to do it, uh, yeah, we have to explain it in many different factors because economy is not only uh, industry and SMEs, economy is also workforce, it's also inspiration and students uh, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the STEM era, it's about international connection, it's about gaining new knowledge and, 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 and uh, you know, fostering more uh, R&D. Um, and I think we have to see it like this uh, in order to really quantify. Obviously, there are areas where you can uh, uh, have economic benefits, and this spans from the uh, fact that, uh, for instance, NASA gave its risky business to uh, space entrepreneurs, which are much more able to do cost savings for the future and can do failures, can recover, can try new things much more than uh, space agencies uh, uh, can do. And I think this is an economic benefit because in, in a way we are doing the risky business and, uh, and, and, and space entrepreneurs have the possibility to find new ways and to find new business models. Uh, and that is, this, is, I think, is one of the uh, things which are actually also quantifiable. I stop here now. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Crick, mm -hmm. the Roscosmos, Roscosmos is a true pioneer in uh, upstream investment. How do you see the exploitment of the exploitation of this investment? Uh, well, as uh, it was said before, there is no easy uh, quantification of uh, how much money we invest, uh, how we return it, because in many cases, uh, space business is a uh, long-term uh, program. And we are investing in education, we are investing in uh, uh, creating technology, and uh, there is no direct transfer of this technology. In many cases, it's indirect. In in many cases, uh, result you, you will see uh, several years and maybe several decades later. Uh, so I think uh, it, it's like like science. When you build observatory, uh, there is some justification why do we need this observatory. But I don't think you have uh, uh, numbers how much money you return back when you build a telescope. Uh, because you will have new knowledge and you will have uh, returned back in economy uh, results uh, because of this knowledge, not because of the investment in, in this specific instrument. The same with the space industry. You are investing in, in science, you are investing in exploration, and uh, you will have results not, uh, not necessarily in this uh, specific uh, company or in this specific business. It can be returned back several years later in completely different form. 
Thank you. Thank you to both that have mentioned education of, uh, of, as one of the most important uh, uh, results of our investment in uh, the new generation, but in general in the culture of uh, approaching space and uh, considering space uh, an, asset, an asset for everybody. Mr. Legal, I want to ask you, uh, do you think that uh, in your uh, uh, you, you, you experience a different uh, uh, point of view from uh, as uh, president of MES uh, and uh, also here uh, as president of IAF. Do you think that uh, exploration is still only for space stakeholders? Uh, are, are already uh, emerging downstream areas that uh, can uh, be considered uh, uh, substantially grown uh, up to, to bring the economy in the sector? Yes, uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, I think that uh, the benefits of uh, explorations uh, are uh, huge, and in particular in the field of uh, economy, of uh, innovation, innovation first, uh, cooperation and inspiration. Innovation because um, for uh, exploration we are at the cutting edge of what uh, we know to do. And uh, there are a lot of developments uh, for which uh, innovation, uh, exploration is a key driver. Uh, for instance, uh, when uh, we sent uh, the Rosetta Philae uh, probe on uh, the comet Shulamogia-Timenko, we were ready at the limit of the technology. In the future, with ExoMars, we will have also a lot of technologies which will be developed specifically for this mission. And uh, it will be a huge benefit for both the agencies, because to uh, push for these developments, and for the industry, which will uh, receive the benefits of all these innovations. So this is the first point. The second point is the cooperation. Because uh, exploration, all the exploration programs uh, are in, uh, in co made in cooperation, and uh, it it uh, leads, uh, uh, it obliges the uh, agencies and the partners to work together, and also with a lot of benefits. And uh, I should say that from this point of view, Europe is probably a very good example because uh, in our key assets, we know how to cooperate within the frame of uh, ISA or on a uh, bilateral uh, basis. But uh, cooperation is very, very important. The third point, which is also, in my opinion, uh, of great importance, is inspiration. Because uh, we need uh, to have uh, talented people uh, working in space, and it is clear that uh, it is uh, probably uh, when uh, presenting exploration programs that we receive a lot of applications of uh, very, very uh, young talented people. And so for these three reasons, innovation, cooperation, and inspiration, in my opinion, the uh, economic uh, benefits of uh, exploration are huge. Thank you. Mr. Rito, from uh, the JAXA point of view, the, uh, the exploration is uh, still a field for uh, only for the space as they call them, or uh, you experience also in Japan the new, uh, the new country, the new industry interested uh, to the application or uh, to even the upstream uh, sector. Yeah. The question is very difficult, and <laughs> some parts are probably the iteration of the question. However, uh, as you mentioned, this environment, environment is changing. And uh, so far, the development uh, or space agency uh, has developed and then, okay, and then technology transfer to the uh, private industry. The time sequence. And uh, recently, or maybe was a bit more in this case, probably, uh, in, in Japan also, uh, uh, 
in a sense, and her process. <coughs> to share the objective of the technology development for the research and development of people. Before starting to do this uh, JAXA, and uh, in that industry, Not only the uh, conventional uh, space industry, but also non space industry that we have uh, just uh, started trying. So, the result of the RRD uh, to be used, we want to use for the space exploration and the space use, but the non, for the non space industry. <coughs> such as the general construction industry, uh, they uh, foresee a uh, new business and as well. So we try, uh, started to try those activities. That's a key part of Thank you. Thank you for the, this very interesting uh, point of view. And uh, now I want to ask Mr. Uh, Jan, uh, Jan and uh, after Mr. Pakistan, which is the role of the public demand and which relationship uh, between the public and the private actors in exploration? Please, Mr. Jan. I'm sorry, I'll show you clearly my idea with my colleague. Uh, 这个问题问得非常好，因为一个商业合作，实际上呢需要得到公众的认识和理解。这个理解和认识是我们推动商业合作，包括太空经济发展一个重要的一个一个很好的生产环境。Commercial sector needs to have a public public understanding. Uh, this is a good environment that we should work in when we have the private sector involved in exploration. 那么从这方面呢，我认为只有公众对这个商业行业的认识和理解以后，那么我们会吸引更多的企业呢参与到这个商业行业的发展，呃支持私营企业参与和支持到我们这个空间探索活动。呃，去年呃通过呃我跟组
Thank you. I mean, uh, I would like to make a comment with the fact uh, <coughs> that predicting the economic value of a field uh, like uh, space exploration is not an easy task uh, because it's kind of unpredictable. It's very much this, uh, similar to, to research in a, in a science, in a scientific field. Uh, you try, you try hard. Uh, and eventually you look back and you find that you have discovered something. So I think uh, there is a potential, there is a strong potential in exploration just because the goals are set are very high. In, in a sense, uh, space exploration is telling us what uh, Steve Jobs was saying, stay hungry. There is a very difficult thing to do, almost impossible, to try your best. Uh, by doing that, uh, you get many results. Some of them are really important. Some of them will be forgotten, but you only know that after you do it. So this is why uh, uh, agency's role is so important, because they can keep the bar at the high level, they can push the society in this direction, they can set common goals uh, to, be, to, be, uh, to, be, to be reached, uh, and uh, in doing that, you promote education, you promote uh, the companies, promote ideas, the young generation, and eventually something good will happen, but we do not know today what will happen. And we, we will try tens of products, tens of business, and eventually you find a clear application. It's always been like that in the past. But today is even more uh, true what we are saying, that because I, I will tell you two things which happened in the last 10 years, which uh, were surprising to almost everybody. Uh, and have to do very strongly with uh, the exploration uh, path. The first one is the reduction of size of satellite. Now everybody talks about nano satellite, micro satellite. I mean, I tell you, a few years ago, uh, 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 this was not the case. Five years ago, mega constellation were kind of forgotten. Now everybody talked about that. I understand is that uh, it was an up and down discussion in the last 20 years, uh, but today the technology is there. So what that was a dream 20 years ago is becoming a reality today. So try, 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 and eventually a good idea will become a reality. And for exploration, the nanosatellites are, are, are not yet uh, understood what they can bring to us. For low Earth orbit, we are, we are sending to low Earth orbit uh, hundreds of those devices. Many of those are just uh, academic uh, toys. Some of them are serious uh, devices. Some of them are creating uh, 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 constellations. But uh, what they can do in deep space exploration, we don't know yet today. There is a tremendous amount of application, and this could lower down the cost of robotic exploration dramatically. We do not know how much this will be possible. There is a tremendous potential there. And the moment the cost goes down for a satellite, then of course the commercial application is uh, something which could be considered. There are two things which, which make the commercial exploitation of space difficult. The cost of getting to space, launchers, and the cost of the satellite. The cost of the satellite is definitely going down. You can build constellation for the cost of the of, of medium to size cars. And this is clearly a big change with respect to the past. And for the, uh, for the getting to space, clearly we need new technology. Re recoverability to lower down the cost of the launcher is an important revolution which is, is taking place nowadays. Again, five years ago, three years ago, nobody was betting on that except a few individuals. Today, everybody is talking about that. The so surprises are there. And the moment you get those results, yeah, it becomes easy. But before you get there, it is very difficult. So we should keep trying, keep trying continuously. Uh, let me give one example, just one example of uh, how this could materialize, creating a surprise again. You may have heard about uh, this nano satellite called Space Farm. Uh, if you don't, go to the internet, look for Space Farm, and you will find what it's about. It has been uh, launched a few months ago and that is a, a three-unit satellite hosting four uh, bio laboratories which are the size uh, of a half to a, to a kilogram dimension and weight. 
and this is to study molecular formation, complex molecular formation, remotely controlled from ground. And this is replacing a big section of the International Space Station where similar studies were doing by the astronaut with a large infrastructure taking many years for planning and many tens of millions for building. Now it's possible to do it from your PC or your iPhone and controlling and making hundreds and hundreds of experiments. And the industry in the pharmaceutical field are mad at that. I mean, I'm very much interested in, in about that because it's opening a new field of exploitation. Again, this started as an idea three years ago. Before that, nobody was considering that. And now we have a new field of space economy, which is uh, popping up, which is uh, creating a real value. And there is a number of those satellites we will be sent to space uh, one after the other in the coming year. The uh, Italian Space Agency is very much uh, uh, following to that, uh, and uh, 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 both uh, using uh, as much as possible the resources uh, available in space, consider the International Space Station and the astronaut. Uh, uh, we will have uh, a, a mission by Paolo Nespoli uh, uh, being launched uh, about uh, in a month and a half from now, where we are going to do some a set of uh, experiment uh, related uh, to uh, behavior of uh, a human being in space. Paolo Nespoli is a 60 years old astronaut, so we, in certain sense, is old by the, by the standard of astronauts. But for this reason, can bring us information about how human body at a certain age respond to this kind of stimulus. And this kind of a standard, a typical study which has been done in the past, uh, using astronaut in the International Space Station, we, we keep doing that because we think it's important. But with the spirit that we try, 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 and eventually something comes out of it. But uh, in, in the future, we are aiming to do these kind of things uh, with different tools, uh, farther away from Earth. Uh, and uh, again, we believe there is a potential for uh, uh, inter uh, economical interest. Uh, if, uh, what I told you before, the technology's cost goes down, the access cost goes down, I'm pretty sure this will materialize with uh, uh, a new product and new services. Thank you, Mr. Opera. Uh, Isa Alastiata uh, also is cited that uh, the work made in the USA by Robinson and Mantucano deliver a, a, a study on social economic <coughs> uh, How uh, do you think that we can maximize the social economic impact in, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, in exploration activities? So indeed, I think the first question you need to ask is whether we already have significant impacts. And we did perform a study to assess the impact of our investment in the ISS program, where Europe invested about 8 plus billion over the last years. And that was a very impressive study so far that there were quite significant economic impacts. So these uh, economic consultants typically look at figures like the multiplier of cost domestic product, job multipliers. And when they came up with the numbers, we could show that the multiplier, the cost domestic product multiplier of space exploration, the RS program, was higher than the average manufacturing industries in Europe, equally high, like, for example, applications program, space exploration, launch program. We could also demonstrate that 100 jobs created in space created nine jobs outside space. So, and they could also show that when measure the exploration impact, and indeed our astronauts have followed by millions of followers in the Twitter and Facebook. We have a tremendous reach. So I think if we look at what you're already achieving, it's tremendous. And I think the first thing we should do, we should create more values on how our phones already take down to the next Then beyond that, I think either was reflecting clearly our member states give us a clear challenge in our exploration strategy. Our strategy is not about exploration, it's about creating economic benefits, creating knowledge, fostering uh, cooperation and inspiration. It says very little about exploration actually. Twice as more towers bring downstream benefits. So we're reflecting on what we can do. So what we're doing, for example, we started an open innovation exchange initiative. So we reach out uh, to non-space industry and we try to see how we can create synergetic R&D, which at the same time addresses exploration challenges and societal challenges. The idea of innovation partnership, and we have already organized innovation exchange on topics like health, robotics, life and environments, and we get very good feedback. 
we have started an initiative which is called the Support Commercial Partnership Initiative. We will reach out to industry to leave activities which are part of our strategy, which are based on clear business plans. We will sign actually uh, in two weeks our first commercial partnership agreement with an SME. So it's not even an SME. It's an SME. And this commercial partnership will for the first time give from from your perspective, commercial access to the space station. Everybody can buy an experiment and find the station for 50,000 euro for four months. And it's even innovative because you can operate from your laptop here in any room where you have Wi-Fi connection. So that's really innovation. Um, we also start some price schemes and competition, different sort of competition. We want to nurture innovation and uh, a new technology. And interesting, some of these price schemes are actually funded and investments from the private sector. So in other words, what we try to do, we try to come up front, open up to new partners, which by their existence have an interest in finding market opportunities. The last thing we're doing, we're trying our ESA projects to introduce benefit management from the start. Benefit management says that in a very early definition of a project, you clearly find the outcome, but also downstream potential. We define measures how you can maximize the downstream potential, and then while you implement the project, you monitor your downstream impact to make sure the benefit achievement is part of the project uh, control mechanism for the Thank you. You mentioned a uh, key uh, word, cooperation. Mr. Speaker, uh, exploration, uh, cooperation is uh, one effect, uh, one very good effect uh, of, uh, that we can consider also a socioeconomic uh, uh, impact because uh, bring a lot of uh, tasks. And uh, Roscosmos, uh, as many other agencies, but mostly Russia has experienced uh, exploration as a tool for diplomacy and cooperation. And again, this is very difficult to measure, to measure economical uh, results of this cooperation. Yeah, but, but we know for sure from previous experience that if we do things together, we achieve uh, better results. Uh, we get uh, more knowledge. Uh, for the same uh, value. And uh, I think uh, another part of the question was uh, how we can increase uh, this impact. And I think uh, we can increase it uh, giving more information. More information about what we are doing, what results we are doing. And uh, uh, for new generations, it's very important to understand uh, what the general direction, what the goal of uh, our activity and uh, even the conferences uh, like this is also important because we are sharing our experience our knowledge and we have a big uh, uh, number of people who, who are following what we are talking about what uh, what are our plans so i think um, uh, well organized flow of information is also very important to, uh, to make it better and of course if you do it on international level it's uh, it's even going out uh, of the country, it became international. Thank you. Information is indeed very important because exploration is always perceived as something very expensive, very risky, long-term investment, and uh, sometimes uh, we uh, do not highlight the web, the general public, uh, how, how much uh, can uh, 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 benefit uh, the rest of life. Mrs. Freud, uh, which role uh, you see for uh, large integrators uh, and uh, small uh, uh, SME in the global value chain? You know that uh, ESA, uh, European uh, Commission and uh, national agency uh, try to uh, invest in policy for SME, SME friendly, but uh, uh, are uh, LSI really SME friendly? Well, I think it, um, there are a lot, a lot of activities, um, uh, and uh, I think uh, every every country, and even as you mentioned, the the Commission uh, is really trying to boost. Uh, it has something also to do, of course, with technology readiness level. Smaller uh, uh, companies uh, can only achieve. Uh, in, um, tasks uh, in, in, in a certain time, uh, a certain uh, level of, of, of technology readiness level. But I think uh, it is a very important component. Uh, and um, those kind of, of companies need uh, support. 
and also startups, you know, need support. And we have in Europe, I think, a rather different structure compared to what we see now with, uh, uh, you know, the new space market in the United States. Uh, we have um, not this amount of venture capital in Europe. We have actually risk aversion. And um, that makes it uh, very, very difficult com to compete with a country like the United States, where actually even uh, you know, uh, billionaires are actually taking their own money and investing that in companies uh, and in, in business cases uh, for the future in the space sector. So I think we would have to do uh, much more in order to be competitive, you know, with this kind of model which comes from new space in the United States. But I think every every country does uh, its share. There has been a study, you know, in particular to uh, help uh, small companies, medium com uh, small medium com uh, SMEs uh, uh, in, in in Germany, also in other countries. So um, there has been a, country, uh, a study on new space in in, in Germany. And um, there have been recommendations, you know, how to boost uh, the space sector and how to include companies which are not yet in the space sector. And uh, uh, the space administration of DLR is actually very active in trying to uh, boost this kind of uh, uh, smaller companies. And uh, also when they are not yet uh, really integrated in the space sector, we have a program uh, like uh, Bandungwa told about ESA, we have a program which is called InnoSpace, which is doing similar things, which is trying to um, uh, to arrange you know, weekends and, and workshops where uh, companies meet and uh, exchange and, and see that they have probably a possibility of entering the space sector and um, uh, support it you know, in order to find a business case by discussions with experts and with people which are in the space sector, prices, all that what has been mentioned before. We are doing that uh, as well uh, in, in, in Germany with many different um, uh, activities. Uh, and, and programs, and I think this is the way to go since we do not have these enormous tax breaks, venture capital, and we are rather risk averse in, 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 in Europe. We have to, to boost um, you know, uh, smaller companies and also startups with our own methods and not just copy you know, what is uh, happening in the, in, in the new space uh, era in the United States. We have to find our own answer. Uh, according to how we work in, in, in Europe. And I think every country does it share, so does Germany. Thank you. You, you mentioned another uh, important uh, 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 part of this uh, discussion, and I want to ask Roberto Pakistan to comment, uh, because uh, to maximize the socioeconomic uh, impacts, it's very important to balance the role of large integrator and SME, of course, in the value chain. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a clearly a difficult question because uh, the large integrators are definitely needed uh, because uh, of uh, the large system they are integrating. So until we do have uh, uh, very large satellite telecommunication, uh, large rockets, and the infrastructure ground system. Uh, there is a little discussion that we need a critical mass to achieve this result because of, of what is a, the least expensive way to do it uh, in, a, in, a, in, in that way. But in perspective, there is definitely more space uh, for uh, initiatives which have uh, uh, less uh, cost, uh, less complexity, and can achieve a result in space that's significant, even starting with smaller masses. So we do need. Uh, to keep alive and to support uh, uh, small and medium enterprises just because of that. On top of it, uh, there is an issue of uh, innovation. Uh, you can discuss uh, if uh, a large uh, integrator is uh, uh, innovation prone or it is innovation resistant. There can be a discussion because there can be a reason one way or the other. Sometimes it's uh, going one way, sometimes it's, uh, it's not going to change this scheme because it's too expensive. And there's no discussion about the fact that the newcomers, by definition, they must bring in innovation, otherwise they better not start. And newcomers coming from other fields, 
with new ideas, uh, with products which have been developed for other companies that may be coming to the space, uh, we definitely need that. Uh, we definitely uh, we welcome this kind of approach. Uh, and the most newcomers are the younger generation, which come in with a completely uh, clear, clean table with new ideas, uh, and they are much, no, uh, much more uh, in, uh, uh, free from prejudice uh, on what can be done and what can't be done. And we desperately needed this kind of approach for space, which, by the way, has been traditionally the approach uh, in, uh, at, the, at the beginning, to try things uh, in spite of the fact they may seem impossible. Okay? So um, there is an, is an ecosystem. It's an evolving ecosystem. I can, I can anticipate uh, that the current picture of how many integ large integrators and uh, which will be their role and uh, what is the role of, of smaller companies may change in the coming years. There is no guaranteed uh, laws that uh, the current ratios uh, of, uh, of investment, of sizes, of numbers uh, will stay the same. We're going to change. But uh, the fact that we need both of uh, these sizes, uh, one size does not fit all the need for space, uh, is quite obvious. Then I think, uh, 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 again, agencies have a role to keep this, uh, uh, this uh, ecosystem alive and to help uh, the, the new entries uh, to, to contribute to this uh, to, uh, pool of ideas to be developed, uh, to bring in people from different fields. And I think it's particularly precious uh, the contribution of people coming from different fields, uh, especially the private sector people coming from different fields. Uh, if you make a, a radiography of which has the newest ideas, the breaking ideas, uh, which are uh, being proposed uh, in the United States, uh, they all come from private sector entrepreneurs, which are not space entrepreneurs. And this is a big lesson that, that we should uh, really keep in mind, uh, because probably they look into the system, uh, look into the potential, look into the environment, the totally different uh, 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 ideas, uh, prejudice uh, or assumptions uh, that people doing space for 50 years uh, were doing. And this is a tremendous value. Okay? So I think uh, agencies should be uh, 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 wise enough uh, and forward-looking enough uh, to allow these complex uh, dynamics to keep going. Uh, and there are many ways to do so, but uh, the first one is to understand that, that we need all of them. Thank you. Mr. Rothenbach, from the point of view of Visa, the, value, the, the importance of uh, the value chain, the balance of the value chain in exploitation Space exploration investments. So I think it was mentioned before we have present the large system indicators, we need them for some future because we have big missions that we have to see the data. We have small medium sized enterprises which historically have for solution qualities and they have been very effective in transferring those technologies to other markets. But I think things are changing a bit because as we are opening up for private sector initiatives, commercial or public private partnership. You see, actors taking different roles. I mentioned before we should call a commercial partnership and we receive proposals from both large system indicators, startups, and SMEs. Interesting, first commercial partnership we actually sign as an SME, which in the end, without any end of involvement of large system indicators, can now provide end to end service for getting access to ISS. Okay, so that's more cubes, but still there's a significance. So there's an SME has grown up to work independently of any system, I think that's a very good thing. We also, as I mentioned earlier, start innovation exchanges where we invite other companies to work with us on R&D. And these partners from non space are big international companies sometimes, which are bigger than large system indicators, and they're very effective in doing R&D. So I think as soon as you open up from the classical institutional human model to the model of partnership, always it will be challenged. Thank you. Also, in this case, you have some, uh, any product, uh, the possibility for SP to develop out of system system for exploration. That, uh, this is a new possibility. In the past, it was impossible for SP access to space with uh, a, a out of system uh, system. Now, Cuba started this uh, come to a reality. And uh, Mr. Tian, uh, I want to ask uh, you, from your perspective, uh, which are the potential commercial perspective of uh, space exploration activities? Uh, 
个问题问得非常好。呃，应该说现在在太空经济或者商业航天在近地轨道呢，应该说已经探索呃有一定的模式，但是在未来的深空探测领域如何开展商业航天，这是个比较大的一个一个挑战，因为商业航天的投资大风险大，那么如何来创造商机，那就需要在这个这个。探索的项目中，要充分考虑给企业，特别私营企业提供能够创造呃商机的机会，那就是这就是政策。所以，中国航天局呢也正在研究未来的月球火星探测中，能够给提供私人企业参与呃这个项目的呃机会，而且呢，通过在有效载荷也好，呃，在科资源开发也好，在这些方面呢，我们也在积在推动这项目。I think it's a very good question. Uh, uh, commercial in low Earth orbit has been more or less materialized, uh, but in, the, in deep space integrations, uh, such as lunar missions and others, uh, we need to have uh, considerations to the private sectors or commercial sector when we're even designing uh, the program. At the designing phase, we should leave ample room and leave them with the, enough interest to participate in such missions particularly in areas of uh, uh, supplies, in areas of in-situ uh, development, and uh, many other service sectors uh, for these missions, so that these private sectors' interests are more uh, uh, inspired, and then they can get involved into these missions. So, in the space research field, how to bring the small companies to this 那么要从项目的设计以及项目的实施到最后项目的开发利用方面，可能要有个全面参与的过程，这样呢，私营企业呢，呃，这个中小企业呢，才能找到机会。我想这也是要有一个建造一个很好的生态环境，就是私营企业参与到生物探测领域的一个生态环境。So there's also a heavy investment involved into this process and also a policy. Governing this whole process as well, and also to encourage the small and medium companies, and private sectors and commercial sector, we do have we need to create a environment so that these companies and and sec private sectors can sustain uh, their livelihood, especially in, in in particularly implementing such of these uh, some of these commercial activities, and these companies can still sustain and have a, a sustained life. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ito, JAXA delivered on Space Station Important Laboratory, the Kibo Laboratory, who uh, uh, delivered lots of experiments and uh, results from our orbit. Uh, how do you uh, see the potential commercial perspective? of the exploration uh, activity. Yeah, as uh, same in the launch vehicle and the uh, spacecraft satellite application, the International Space Station or the German Energy Kibo, that's uh, old fashioned. And currently, However, uh, these uh, few years, uh, the private uh, downstream industry uh, invests themselves to make you know, research on people. We see a little uh, light for mm -hmm. the nationalization or the privatization of the electronics. You can microgravity, you can We We are not sure these are all successful and like the mechanism later. However, we have some 
for that meat. So we are trying to, uh, we are just trying to focus on so far, so, so far, just to get uh, proposal and selection. And recently, we focus on two, three uh, things that uh, one is directly uh, connected to the uh, goals of the national scientific object and also uh, private investment Thank you, Roberto Matisa. Uh, I think the issue of uh, utilization of the existing infrastructure for uh, economic application uh, it, it can be can be seen, uh, for instance, starting from the space station. Space station is obviously the largest uh, endeavor in this field. We know how much it costed, and we know how much cost in maintaining it. And uh, for this reason, there is a debate what to do after 2024 with going on. But having said that, uh, uh, I would like also to underline uh, how attempt to use a space station or the environment of the um, technology for commercial application is giving some result. I uh, mean, the capability of launching nano satellite from the the laboratory, the Kipo station, uh, the Kipo laboratory, it is uh, obviously a success. And again, uh, this was not uh, written on the on the blueprint of the space station where it was invented. It has been added sometime in the last few years. Somebody wake up and realize that the space station is an excellent uh, launching pad. And the launching from a space station it requires basically a spring, which is a kind of a simple way to do it. And now it's obvious that can be done, and some uh, clever young uh, entrepreneur in the United States, helped by NASA in a systematic manner, invented this multi spring cannon to land the satellite, and somebody else uh, is. Uh, created the first uh, constellation out of 72 satellites to have a frequent Earth observation and visitation. So this is a story which has to do with the economy because uh, some resources uh, of uploading mass by NASA was made available to a startup uh, which was proposing that to a market and another startup came in with the bright idea and magically just produced value. This is a real story, it's not something which is invented. It is something unexpected, yes, but real. Uh, let me keep going with that. And you know that recently the space station uh, uh, Bigelow added uh, an expandable module to test uh, technologies for the future space tourism type of application. Uh, it's a fact, has been put in, tested with some result, uh, and I think uh, more will follow. Uh, nowadays, there is a discussion what to do using element of the space station after the space station retirement to set up for a special version of the space station suited for space tourism. Again, so those are ideas which are completely on the floor. Some of them are large and expensive, some of them are small and smart, but uh, both, all of them are trying to use uh, this concept in a different way. I cannot anticipate, I cannot guarantee that the space station as it is will be a commercial valuable object or environment. But definitely is starting a number of ideas. Some of them have definitely a significant value for commercial application. Probably this is the way if we anticipate what happened in 10 years on the space station, it's probably very difficult, very different from what will happen. But there are signs that commercial application of this environment, this technology, this potential are being done today. Please, Pascal. 
I just uh, want to add some. Thank you very much. I forgot about GIPSAT uh, capability of the people. Yeah. Uh, our uh, senior colleagues uh, decided to have a pressurized and exposed. Yeah. And that may so uh, in the beginning it was Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to add uh, uh, what Roberto just, just mentioned. These are really uh, uh, very, very important examples because um, when we are looking at the exploration roadmaps, uh, if we want to go further into deep space, um, uh, LEO, in some sense, has to be commercialized or should mostly uh, uh, um, uh, have uh, you know business models and interesting experiments um, on the space station, and then later on probably in, in platforms uh, uh, which are you know uh, driven by the uh, and operated by the private sector. And um, what we see in the United States, what what you explained with nanoracks, and also what what happens in, uh, on, on Kibo, these are examples. Um, how, how the industry is, is finding a market and we always hear uh, from, from meetings in the US that there is a lot of interest coming from the pharmacy industry and, and many others in order to do experiments uh, in low Earth orbit. And I'm not sure if in, in Europe this is already something which is uh, so actively pursued and I know that ESA is making a study for uh, you know, a commercial um, activities in, in low Earth orbit, and I think this will be an important uh, step, you know, further. Because if we want to go uh, uh, further, and if we want to go to the moon and further out to Mars, we will not be able to pay for all destinations. And we will have to, to have a business case for, for low Earth orbit, where a lot of industry is actually really concentrating to do um, interesting experiments, uh, which are also uh, have a, you know um, a translating down to the downstream sector, and um, uh, I think we, in, in Europe we still need uh, this um, activation and, and, and making people interesting, uh, explaining to people what options there are, so that they develop ideas uh, to contribute to these commercial activities in low Earth orbit. So we understand from uh, your answer that the potential commercial perspective are huge. But I want to ask to Mr. Gall which uh, key, uh, key, key performance indicator we can use to evaluate this uh, impact. Because the, the problem is to show that uh, the investment uh, are uh, useful or, uh, for, uh, also for other uh, for other sector and uh, eventually benefit uh, the, the, the society. No, but I think that uh, when uh, asking to uh, companies which uh, do not belong to the space sector to participate in two space projects, in fact, uh, there are two benefits. Uh, the first one is that uh, they are coming with uh, new ideas, discutive ideas, and uh, generally with costs which are much lower than uh, well-established players. Uh, recently, uh, FNES uh, decided to enter into uh, the non-satellite uh, systems uh, in asking uh, the newcomer, Nexia, in the south of France, uh, to develop a nanosatellite uh, for the use for uh, the Argos mission. And uh, I can tell you that the costs uh, are much lower than uh, from uh, user players, but it's normal because I come uh, with uh, new ideas, new approaches, and the globally uh, costs uh, which are lower. So this is the first benefit. The second benefit is that, uh, in my opinion, uh, the technologies coming from space, which uh, are used by uh, the newcomers, can be uh, reused for other applications in space. And so uh, it's a kind of a post-fertilization with a uh, win-win situation, uh, benefits from uh, new uh, use of space, which are uh, huge for uh, users which do not belong to the space sector. And so uh, I think that uh, we have uh, to pursue this way, and uh, the agencies, the space agencies, have uh, to uh, support this kind of new approach 
with uh, an approach which is uh, more, uh, let us say, uh, bottom-up than uh, top-down as it was in the past. And this is exactly what we are doing. We uh, created uh, two years ago a specific directorate for innovation. And uh, we want uh, to have uh, new companies uh, coming from outside of the space world working for space. And vice versa, we want uh, to see uh, space technologies used for the by companies which do not uh, belong to the space world and to be used for non-space applications. Thank you. So we can consider uh, this uh, uh, absolutely the, the sum uh, performance indicator. I don't know if uh, Mr. Fitter want to add uh, something uh, on, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, because uh, of course the number of non-space users, the number of uh, industry involved, uh, the, 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 uh, the cost of uh, the activity can be uh, some indicators, but perhaps uh, you, you can uh, comment or add something to this? Yeah, as I said before, it's uh, it's very difficult to evaluate, and I think it's too early for us to set some kind of KPIs uh, for uh, to estimate the result of your exploration. As I said, the result will uh, come later in different forms, and uh, trying to attach it to some specific numbers, I think, would be wasted. Just just yes, two things. Yes, yes. um, when you when you talk about science and technology, I see patents and publications are still uh, a key performance indicator which you can take into account. Um, I can say that we are uh, talking about experiments on board of the station. We also realize that trying to find joint uh, KPIs for for different types of experiments is is also very difficult. And now uh, estimating experiments on board the uh, space station, we realize that. Uh, for different experiments, we need different KPIs. Uh, for some of them, like experiments uh, for fundamental science, uh, KPIs, good KPIs could be publications, uh, but uh, some experiments are done not for uh, pure science. Some of them done for industry, and industry need to uh, check, is this material is good for to build new, uh, new modules? Is this uh, this type of system is good uh, to have a new type of thermal uh, control system? So uh, a lot of experiments done on the station uh, on Russian segment and on US segment uh, is for industry and for future exploration program. And in this case, KPI shouldn't be publications because in, in many cases, in, in this type of things, um, uh, we have probably. Uh, we need to find numbers uh, that shows how much of the of result of this experiment would be implemented in uh, in future design. So, uh, as I said, there is no KPIs for uh, for exploration in general, but for different type of activities, uh, there should be different KPIs, and we realize that we probably cannot find uh, joint uh, KPIs for uh, general activity. Everything is very specific. You just to say there are key indicators, the economic indicators, and I'm very impressed with, for example, we see happening in the United Kingdom where they have a clear strategy in space for economic growth. They have a very simple goal, I think they want to have 10% market share of the space economy in 2030, and they start measuring the size of the space economy since they have some business strategy and it's growing. And that's a good trend. We have looked also in other economic indicators like how the money spent in space adds to the GDP plus domestic products. We look at how it creates jobs outside space, what we have the in the outer space industry, what is mentioned before by Pascal, because of course we look at how effective we make use of our infrastructure, we measure the number of experiments performed on ISS, we look at the number of technical experiments and related to work, we look at the number of publications, the high impact journals, very important. We look at the reach, the inspiration reach, we look at the number of followers of the Twitter, Facebook, one of our astronauts, we look at the reach of location activities. But for me, the ultimate indicator is how the investment levels are going. We see growing private sector investment, and that's good. But looking at institutional investment and exploration, at the peak time of the ISS program we spend in Europe, in the economic condition of today, 900 million a year. 900 million a year. Today, 
Wir teilen die Leo, Moon und Mars, for half this amount of zoom with growth capability. So that we should make us think. I mean, are we on the right track? Uh, should we, how can we break this deadlock of being not able to grow our investment base exploration if we do really believe that as economic growth this is hard to be? Thank you. Thank you for this comment. And uh, now another point uh, is that to maximize the leverage effect of upstream uh, to downstream, uh, we have to implement a uh, uh, technology transfer strategy. Mr. Legal, what do you think about uh, this possibility? No, I think that uh, it is clear that uh, to uh, continue uh, in this way, uh, we have to develop uh, real new technologies and uh, once again we make a descriptive approach because I think that it is a key word. Uh, there is a huge advantage for uh, space activities, but uh, today we see that more and more people use completely different approaches. This is what is referred to the space in the US, but uh, there is new space in fact uh, everywhere in the world. And uh, we have uh, to encourage people to use the new technology because at the end of the day, it will decrease the cost and it will be a huge uh, accelerator of uh, the use of space. And this is, in my opinion, what is uh, at key in uh, the coming years to strongly decrease the cost of access to space. We have to talk about uh, the cost of uh, launches of satellites, but uh, we have to continue. And uh, today, what is uh, very, very surprising is that we have a completely change of paradigm. Uh, a few years ago, when uh, we defined a uh, system for Earth observation, what was key was the resolution. And uh, France was a good example for that. We invented uh, the commercial use of uh, remote sensing systems with the spot series, but we have small number of big satellites with an excellent resolution. Now, there are newcomers explaining that uh, the resolution is not at all key. What is key is the capability when something happens somewhere in the world to provide an image within, within uh, 10 minutes, whatever the resolution. And there are some uh, companies, as Planet in the, in the US, which uh, have now uh, 100 satellites. And uh, when something happens in the world, they uh, immediately provide the image. And this is the result of a completely new approach. And uh, it is, uh, even if it is not uh, a good news for what we did in the past, but uh, today it is clear that having this capability to provide images uh, very, very quickly is a real differentiator and uh, is a new uh, paradigm to uh, use the space data. And uh, we will continue, we spoke as well about reusability. Three years ago, nobody could even imagine reusability. Of course, there were in the past the space in the US, the space shuttle, and Russia as well, but uh, it was uh, not a way to decrease the cost. Today, with reusability, we see that uh, there are probably a way in this direction, and I am sure that uh, many, many new technologies will be applied to reduce the cost, and uh, when we reduce the cost, we create a new economy, we create new applications, and uh, at the end of the day, we develop space applications. Thank you for this answer. This comment shows us also how the exploration is interconnected uh, to other space sectors, and uh, so closer uh, than uh, how was perceived uh, before. Uh, Mr. Fian. Uh, also, uh, for you, this uh, question about uh, technology transfer, because uh, in a uh, challenging mission, uh, we learn a lot uh, and we develop uh, crucial enabling technologies that uh, can be used also for uh, uh, different uh, uh, applications. <coughs>空间探索呢，会创造些新的技术。这些新技术，呃，应该说更多的要向这个各个领域转化。呃，像我们在空间探索中的信息通讯技术、测控技术、人工智能技术，这些技术呢，都实际上在非常多的领域啊，有广泛
那么怎么去把它转化的更好、更快？那这里面就是说，一，这个技术的投资方，包括政府，要更多的开放政策，允许这技术转化。第二呢，应该更多的企业提前参与到技术研发中，那么它就拥有有机的转化的驱动力。所以这两个方向，我认为，一方面要开发更多的新技术，同时呢，使这些技术能够很快的转化，这需要两个。I think exploration will drive many technologies. Uh, these technologies, including uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, high-speed information, IT, uh, IT communication technologies, all of these technologies uh, can be uh, transferred and converted to commercial applications. Um, but uh, the conversion needs to have uh, different approaches. First approach would be the government encouragement, including a policy given to those technologies that derive from exploration missions. The second uh, possibility is that the enterprises and the private sectors uh, will have a preemptive participation, what we call it, because they can anticipate these technologies that will derive from these missions and they can start participating even before or at the designing phase of these missions, so that these technologies are ready to be commercialized after they are uh, materialized. The Chinese government has clearly stated a strategic development plan. They think that the company is the main force of creating technology. In the normal industrial development, it is the same. For exploration technology, is it possible to use it? Is it also the company is the main force of creating technology? 所以我们国家航天局也正在研究，如何真正从未来的空间探索活动中，使企业成为技术创新的主体力量。那么这就要从法律上、政策上和研究的途径上，要更有灵活的、开放的政策，让企业提更多的能参与到这个空间探索活动。我认为这是一个推动技术转移的一个非常重要的一个途径。There's a Chinese regulation that could confirm that the industry has uh, the innovation uh, design. It's the main body of innovation. And whether space is the same story or not, we have to find out. But we need to have certain policies to kind of encourage the industry to, uh, to, to be the main body and to derive innovation from themselves. Uh, 活动的投资和运行主体是政府部门和机构，那么我们也正在探索转型，希望更多的企业，特别包括私营企业和社会组织，能参与到政府的这个活动中，呃，探索活动中。那么我们从这个角度来说，正在研究一些政策，能够让它开始尝试开展这个技术的呃使用和基础设施的使用，呃以及。共享数据的呃成果方面，那么这方面呢，呃正在做一些政策。当然，这个方面我们也愿意和我们在座的呃各国的航天机构也好，包括企业也好，开展这方面的合作。The exploration missions are mostly invested by the Chinese government, but somehow we want to encourage the private sectors, the industries to start having innovations and innovative ideas, and even deriving products and technologies from these missions. Uh, we do have a plan to make policies, and we are in the process of making them, uh, to have a general perception of these technologies to the general public with a wider audience, if you like, of the commercial sector. And also, uh, CNS is willing to cooperate on these, uh, either policy making or, is it, or the governing of these technologies, and transfer all these technologies with, the, with our international partners. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tian. And uh, now I have a question for Mr. Ruckenbacher. Do you think uh, that the IPR policy can facilitate the market creation? I think IPR policy and market creation are interconnected, but now not the IPR is the right solution. But I think on one side, I think, for example, um, for our commercial partnership and for the commercial of ISS, we give all the IPR now commercial users to make 
future they can have of the business model. On the other side, I think open eye art can also have great business cases. So I think our policy is key. And I think it's very, very important that we can be think about it, but also make sure there's a single answer to the business in our Do you want to comment on the possibility to change the IPR policies uh, uh, to, to help the market, or do you think that uh, in fact uh, this is uh, not a key element uh, or uh, a really enabling element? Uh? I'm not sure that this is uh, something that we will uh, really change uh, the things because. In fact, uh, the market is in, and uh, it will be the market we will uh, change. If we have methods, uh, uh, regulations, and so on, if uh, it doesn't go to meet the needs of the market, the market will find uh, another way to uh, find the way. You say uh, we saw it in uh, many, many cases. I think that uh, agencies uh, can support the market, but uh, if we are in accordance with what uh, uh, the market needs. If we propose the things uh, which are uh, too different from the expectations of the market, it doesn't work. And this is why it is, in my opinion, so important to have in your agencies a specific uh, place where to listen, to analyze what are the market needs in order to uh, propose a way to uh, support it, but which are exactly in accordance with the market. And uh, I have a last question for uh, everybody about uh, the, a successful story of uh, transfer from uh, upstream to downstream uh, sector uh, of investment that uh, bring a successful uh, downstream application. Uh, who who wants uh, to intervene on this? Pascal, please. Ah. <laughs> everybody knows the, the question in advance. So there are so, so many, many <laughs> so many, so many success stories that everybody. <laughs> no, I mean uh, uh, definitely uh, two, two examples of the story we consider successful. Uh, the National Space Station, uh, uh, the. Uh, the the, the modules for transport, the cargo model for transportation were developed, uh, and also one of them became an habitable model in the space station uh, with the technology which was developed in the construction phase in Turin in that uh, space. And uh, we are very happy to realize that now the Cygnus module, which are carrying the cargo to the space station uh, and uh, are derived from the same technology under a commercial contract by. Uh, uh, American companies to the Italian one, and uh, so far 18 of those uh, cargos have been uh, uh, purchased or uh, contracted out uh, by, uh, by, by under commercial, uh, commercial uh, contract. And this is a good example that, that uh, since we need the cargos, we need the technology, we need for the future transportation system to de deliver those payloads. Uh, uh, now has become not anymore the, the agency supported activity and has become a part of the machinery which has some commercial value. Uh, on the other side, uh, there are uh, examples of experiments that have been done uh, on board the space station. In particular, we are we are studying in the past uh, uh, some uh, microalga system that are sensitive to radiation and photonic uh, and photons. Uh, and by studying them as a biosensor on the space station, we learn how to understand the, how they are stressed under radiation conditions and how they can be used uh, under the stress condition to monitor the, 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 the contamination of water on Earth. This is a one example uh, of the technologies which are developed uh, in space and are, have now bringing some value, some commercial value. There are many of those stories. These two, one is very big, the small size, but that both of them are a commercial significance. Um, <laughs> I was rushing. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I think uh, we talked already about um, activities, you know, how to um, to facilitate spin-ins, and I talked about the innovation, uh, inner space uh, um, um, activities which we have, and where we also right now work with uh, the transportation industry um, uh, in order to, to have spin-ins. Uh, but uh, uh, concrete examples, we had an example on the space station, I think one of the first uh, infrastructures you know, from Germany, uh, the plasma crystal experiment at P uh, PK3, um, uh, which produces a cold plasma. And um, this is a, 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 a spin-off because companies now uh, in, in, in Germany are actually developed this technique further. Uh, which was tested on the International Space Station and used it for sterilization of uh, hospitals, uh, plasma sterilization of hospitals, uh, and, and uh, that was certainly a very important uh, success story. And um, uh, what we do in our institute for robotics and mechatronics, that is also um, uh, 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 technologies which we want to use on planetary surfaces for exploration in the future, uh, we are also have a spin-off here for the uh, uh, medical industry, where we are actually uh, um, make robots uh, which can do invasive surgery, um, and, um, and this is licensed uh, to companies uh, in the in, in the United States. So they are, I think every uh, space agency has um, um, uh, specific examples, and this was one example from the ISS and the other example from exploration because uh, this is the next thing which we have, I, I think, really to uh, promote, you know, how we can have uh, really a benefit for society from exploration towards Moon, Mars and, and asteroids. Jenny, please. Please, uh, yeah. No, I, I, I think that uh, there are a number of examples, but uh, in my opinion, the best is uh, for tomorrow. Because uh, all this uh, success story has been developed, uh, let us say, without a strong effort uh, in order to get these developments. But now there is this change of paradigm, and uh, everyone, everywhere in the world, thinks about, think about uh, the possibility to have this enough and to use uh, space technologies for the whole. And uh, I'm very impressed because uh, in the last month uh, we uh, developed two new applications uh, in this uh, which were completely, uh, let us say, uh, unpredictable. The first one, uh, as you know, we have uh, a real success story in oceanography in uh, measuring uh, the increase of uh, the average level of the ocean, which is 3.2 millimeters a year, it's not so, so much and with satellites. And uh, we apply now this technology to control the uh, railway, the rail tracks. Because uh, when it rains, the tracks of the railway is moving and up to now people uh, monitored this uh, very, very small move uh, with binoculars. It, it was a very uh, old method. But now with satellites we can do something. This is the first application, and it is very promising, and we will continue like that. And in the same way, uh, during the last flight of uh, Thomas Pesquet, uh, there was a specific experiment on board to uh, study uh, the way the bones of the astronauts are moving, because it's a kind of uh, osteoporosis, but uh, which is Unfortunately, a disease which is not uh, reversible when it happens uh, on uh, Earth, but uh, in space, for astronauts, by chance, it is reversible. But uh, we can study it, and uh, also it's a new approach. And I am sure that in the future, with all what is done by all the agencies, try to see how to take uh, all the benefits of uh, space, we will have many, many uh, examples, uh, very concrete of the uh, Thank you. Mr. Rito, please. Uh, yes, the traditional uh, technology transfer, several of uh, One is uh, an incorruptible power supply, so power supply cycle. And the underwear uh, with different uh, 
filterization and, and by bacterial property. And also cooling underwear. And also uh, insulation of the they have much of value. Uh, but uh, uh, let me have uh, a few examples, not yet complete success, but uh, uh, sounds like success. <laughs> uh, that I mentioned the uh, space exploration innovation hub center we have just started. And we just uh, see the uh, intermediate results. And, uh, one is uh, uh, together with the uh, Japanese construction company, Hajin Corporation. It's a uh, uh, development and evaluation of an uh, innovative remote construction system. So we will use on the moon or not, but they will use on the ground or the competitive. And the other one is, uh, looks like, it looks uh, funny, but uh, I think it's interesting. It's uh, with a poi company. Poi company. At uh, uh, poi technology robotics. Small size, low energy, and low cost. Uh, because the poi is very cheap. Uh, but uh, I was very surprised to see how it is technologically smart. So they uh, get inspiration from our uh, space exploration activity. And we got a uh, very simple and uh, low cost robot. So that's me. Thank you. Thank you. It's quite an effective large transfer program. Since since its inception, we had more than 300 successful transfers from space to non space. We established more than 100 service startups and quite all the other methods. So, interesting, many of those transfers and, and, and patterns are linked to space exploration methods. And we try and give more visibility to those. So, for example, a membrane that developed for an organic membrane developed for life support is now used to clean. Water in the school of Morocco, we have materials which are still not closing, is now employed in developing racing shoes, uh, running shoes. We have space insulation blankets, which are now used to develop cooling suits for racing car drivers and also for rockets in nuclear power stations. There are many examples in the health sector. For example, we have new testing devices for blood, which are used for astronaut, also in Earth space, get to down very quickly. Um, the uh, artificial heart pumps and artificial limbs are also derived from space technology. There's a long list, and we decided because of this, this is a long list, we need to do more about it. We published a few weeks ago uh, space site, the uh, internet portal, which is called We Explore You Benefit, where we want to publish all these success stories, update them regularly, to create more awareness on what's happening already, because I think the awareness on all the success stories is not existing today. The Teflon comes probably out of date. I think there are better stories. Thank you. Mr. Well, um, some of this example was uh, already here. And actually, I also wanted to mention our joint experiment with Plasma Vista. And uh, of course, uh, this result uh, of uh, managing cold plasma, not to terrorize, uh, make uh, hospital sterile, but also apply directly to the wound. I talked to scientists, and they said they can uh, sterilize uh, wounds and burns and it's really helped to cure this, this kind of problems. Uh, we have a long list, start from decades actually, uh, when we use uh, uh, special suits that were used uh, in the initial phase of uh, space flights to put um, an external load on the skeleton. Uh, it used to cure disease uh, uh, in the underground. So the same approach, same result we got many, many years ago uh, for this um, suit, we uh, used on the ground for many years already in hospitals. Also, uh, returning back to plasma crystal uh, experiment, uh, we learned how to manage, uh, actually this is uh, another name of uh, plasma we are studying, this experiment is plastic plasma. And um, 
scientists learn how to manage actually uh, particles in plasma, and it help it may help uh, to uh, develop a very clean environment when you can manage all particles and then remove them away in case you need mm, specific um, uh, uh, specific volume to be very clean or maybe to put uh, specific uh, particles in in this volume uh, if we need it. And basically, uh, we learn how to manage uh, dust and plasma. So uh, this I agree. The, the list of uh, these things very long and uh, uh, sometimes it's not even technology transfer, it's also a result of experiments transfer. Uh, for many years we are learning how to get uh, pure materials in space, yes, uh, weightlessness allow us to do this. So result of this uh, used in pharmaceutical uh, companies a lot. Uh, uh, so I agree, the list is very, very long and sometimes we don't even uh, know that uh, results uh, that people got in uh, in space, uh, space research, space industry can be used on the ground. Most uh, common uh, results is also for a similar environment. We used to live in uh, close volume, so we need to uh, develop and uh, uh, improve our life support systems. And in some cases, we need uh, the similar uh, environment. Uh, in unclosed uh, environment underwater, uh, for science, uh, science, for even for uh, submarines. Uh, some part of life support systems are very similar, so they, they can use uh, this. For nuclear plants or laboratory nuclear plants, they also need to be isolated, so uh, the same type of life support system can be used there. So uh, the range of these uh, results is very wide. Thank you. And last but not least, I pleasure to conclude this tour de table with the success story from, from China. Please, Mr. Tiang. Thank you。这个空间探索的技术商业转化呢，应该说在中国这个航天领域呢，也是还是比较丰富的。呃，目前我们在航天领域的上市公司，就依托于航天技术上市公司，大概有呃几十家、二十多家。那么他们都是通过
最近呢，我们也支持了一个一些私营企业，在现有的太阳能技术进一步创新。我可以告诉大家，我们现在有一家企业就在现有的太阳能的这个平换板的基础上，增加这个简易装置，它使它的太阳能的转化率超过了百分之四十。这项技术也得到了我们的认证。那么正在走向一个从实验走向一个商业化的模式，我想这些都对，是对我们太阳能的产业的发展呢，都会起到巨大的推动作用。And also we're providing some funding for these development. For example, one of the solar panel manufacturer, we provide an even a very innovative device that can increase the conversion rate from conventional conversion rate to more than forty percent. So this uh, small device is a very innovative idea, and uh, we're encouraging the companies to, to do more on this uh, on this particular area. This this example just shows that as long as we open the technology to small business or to some enterprises, then its innovative force is huge. So I think, from a technology change and transformation perspective, this has a huge advantage. So this is what we're going to talk about today. It's about the 如何使商业航天迈向商业经济和共享经济和未来的信息社会发展？我觉得这个路是一个光明大道，值得去探索。So、I think、uh, once you open the new technology to the commercial sector, there are many、uh, innovative ideas will come up, and they will have、uh, more innovative products.、Uh, this is coherent to what we have discussed today: commercial space and commercial economy.、Uh, I think once、uh, once we start. The,、uh, the implementation of this approach,、uh, the, the future is very bright. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tian. Thank you to everybody.、Uh, so we we understand that, that we are already the first area of the space economy. Downstream、uh, is uh, really uh, already a reality. Also, if、uh, the best the success story is the one to come, the next one. As Daniel、uh, Legal told before, so、uh, starting from、uh, these ideas,、uh, I, I like that today. Of course, this discussion、uh, will go on. I just、uh, open、uh, the floor to the public if someone has、uh, question or comments for our speakers. But they already、uh, invest a lot and give you a lot of.、Uh, Uh, points uh, to, to reflect, uh, to further、uh, elaborate、uh, so perhaps、uh, we can、uh, close this discussion. Thanking you a lot、uh, for joining、uh, this discussion for accepting this invitation. Thank you very much.